I'm Dr. Amber Todd, co-author of How Do Siamese Cats Get Their Color in the January 2016 issue of NSTA's The Science Teacher. When I was going through high school and even through the first part of college, I thought DNA was the most important thing inside of the cell. It controlled everything. Some of my first research was actually in DNA damage and repair. I researched an enzyme responsible for finding and clipping out small damaged bases in DNA, and other enzymes responsible for repairing mismatched bases in the DNA. But as I learned more about DNA repair through my research, I came to realize DNA is important because it codes for proteins. DNA codes for other things too, like ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA, microRNAs, and more. But right now I'm just going to talk about DNA coding for proteins. So DNA is important because it codes for proteins. When DNA gets changed or damaged, those changes can then alter proteins produced. Proteins are actually extremely important. When I was in high school, I really had no idea what proteins did. I knew that DNA made RNA, and that made protein. Ta-da! The end! But I never understood the point of making proteins. Why would a cell make a whole bunch of proteins? Well, it's because proteins do the work inside of the cell. They're things that make the cell function. They do all sorts of cool things like catalyze reactions, keep the cell a certain shape, let cells communicate with each other, make the cell move, and tons of other stuff. Proteins are also responsible for giving us our traits. As my research shifted focus and I became a science educator, I realized a lot of students were just like me when I was in high school. They could understand the central dogma and that DNA made proteins, but they never really got the message that proteins did stuff. So students often connected genes directly with traits, saying things like your genes code for your traits or your genes give you your traits. They completely leave out the role of proteins, probably because they really don't know exactly what proteins do. So as part of my educational research, I wrote a short unit to help explain that proteins are important and can do things that give us directly observable traits. Molecular biology can be really difficult because you can't really see all of these tiny little entities doing things. So I wanted the unit to focus on showing examples of proteins in action doing things that we could directly observe. I centered the unit on the driving question, how do Siamese cats get their color? Because I thought it was a really cool example of proteins influencing traits that we can see. My little cat Snip right here is going to help me out in explaining things. So Siamese cats have a pretty distinct coloration pattern. Their ears and face and paws and tail are brown, while the main portion of their body is white. In the very beginning of the unit, I have a story about a family that has two Siamese cats. One likes being outside in the winter, and the family notices that the fur on the body starts to turn a little darker after he's outside for a while. The other cat hates the snow and wears boots on its little feet. And so when the family takes the boots off, they notice that the feet have actually gotten lighter colored. Students then come up with a model of how they think Siamese cats get their coat coloration. And as they go through the unit, they learn about what proteins can do, that proteins can be denatured or unfolded by heat or acid, and they collect evidence to ultimately build an explanation for how the cat gets its color. Okay, so how does the cat get its color? Well, Siamese cats have a special version of a gene that codes for an enzyme responsible for making a precursor of melanin. All right, melanin is a pigment. It's what makes the parts of the cat brown, like his ears and his paws. Okay, so some of your students might start to guess that the protein that makes this precursor of melanin is only expressed in the parts of the cat that are brown, but that would actually be wrong. It's expressed in the entire cat, even the white part. Okay, so if the gene that is making the protein is in the entire cat, why isn't the cat brown through the whole cat? Okay, it's because the Siamese cat has a special version of the gene. The gene has a mutation in it that ever so slightly changed the amino acid sequence of the protein. The protein still works, it can still make the melanin precursor, but the 3D structure isn't as stable. So we call this protein a heat sensitive protein because at a moderate heat the protein actually denatures or unfolds, rendering it non-functional. At a high enough heat, basically all proteins unfold, but this protein in the Siamese cat unfolds at a much lower temperature. It's this heat sensitivity that causes the neat coat coloration pattern. The body of the cat is warm, okay? It's just warm enough to, de to denature the protein. So the protein is expressed, but the protein denatures, and so it can't make the precursor of melanin. So no dark color in the body. Okay, the cat's extremities are a little bit colder than the rest of the body, just cold enough for the protein not to denature. So it stays folded and it stays functional and it makes the melanin precursor, leading to the dark coloration you see like in his ears and his paws and his little tail. So a heat sensitive protein is why Siamese cats have their neat coat coloration pattern. And hopefully after doing this unit, your students will have a better understanding of what proteins do and how proteins connect genes and traits. 
So thank you for listening and check out my paper in the Science Teacher for some more details. The unit's also freely available on NSTA's website for use in your own classroom. Thank you!